the medications that we give for preterm labor. All we're trying to do is slow down the rate of contraction inside the uterus. And the main mechanism of action here is we're trying to slow down the influx of calcium here, okay, in most of our um, medications. So the first medication that you are will, what am I saying, that you will be tested on in nursing school is magnesium sulfate. And magnesium sulfate is that drug, and if you guys saw my video on magnesium, magnesium is that handgun at the electrolyte party. And that handgun is pointed either at the heart or either at the uterus and telling it to calm down, telling it to decrease activity, telling it to stop overreacting. And so the gun, when you bring a gun to an electrolyte party, everyone hits the deck and covers their head, okay? So, if you guys think of the mechanism of action here, what's really happening is we're blocking calcium from influxing into the cell. Now, I know it's a loose connection, but if you, it helps you get the answers right on your test, you can think about calcium being hard like a bone because bones have calcium. It's not the same type of calcium in terms of ions versus the vitamin calcium, but you can draw the loose connection here. That if calcium is hard like a bone, you don't want your uterus to be hard like a bone in terms of like, ah, oh, very contracted. You want it to be very soft and relax. Just relax. Take it easy, you know? So for magnesium, we're blocking the influx of calcium, making it soft, making it supple. So we're going to give your patients a loading dose of 4 to 6 grams um, in 30 minutes. And a loading dose, if you guys haven't taken pharmacology yet, or if you're going through it right now, a loading dose is just like a signing bonus. We have a therapeutic range. Your patient has basically no medication in their body here. And they need to get up to a therapeutic range up here. We don't want them to go over the therapeutic range and get an overdose. And we don't want them to be under the therapeutic range so that they don't have any um, medication working for them. So in order to get them up to the therapeutic range, we're gonna give them a loading dose. And this loading dose of magnesium sulfate we give it through an IV, and we give it four to six grams in 30 minutes. Now, for your maintenance, they're going to be on an IV drip. We're doing one to three grams an hour. That's what we're doing there. So, some cautions when giving our mag sulfate. We know that in normal pharmacokinetics, how drugs are being absorbed and distributed and excreted from your body. Real quick again, real quick. Don't forget ADME. That's absorption, distribution, metabolization, and excretion. All drugs are excreted through your kidneys. Magnesium sulfate is that drug that hurts your kidneys when it's excreted. So how long does it take half the drug to get out of the body? That is your half life. Half the drug to get out of the body and into the potty. That's your half life. So before giving magnesium, you want to check your BUN and creatinine. Because that's going to go and punch your kidney right when it gets out the doors into the body. Now, magnesium is not the only thing that affects your kidneys. You have vancomycin, your anti-infective. You have your um, gentamicins that really are harmful to the kidneys. So just saying, magnesium sulfate, you need to check the BUN creat. Um, you need to check your toxicity levels. I believe it's every four hours we're checking blood levels to make sure that your patient is in the therapeutic range. We don't want to be over the therapeutic range and overdose your patient. Because if we're telling everything in the body to relax, we're telling even the respiratory rate to relax. 
and we can tell the heart to relax way too much. That's not a good thing. So our antidote for our, uh, what's it called? Magnesium sulfate is our calcium gluconate. We're blocking the influx of calcium. So what do you think we need to give if we're blocking calcium? That's right, we need to give calcium if we overdose our patient. If our patient has too much magnesium sulfate and we blocked everything and everything's just relaxed and the respiratory rate is spiraling down, 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 we need to give and reverse the effect. Just like peanut butter has jelly, just like magnesium sulfate has calcium gluconate, we can reverse it. And just like uh, our narcotics, we have our Narcan that reverses our narcotics. Every drug you give usually has something to reverse the effects. So our next drug here is tributylene is also another medication that we give to stop contractions. So if you guys remember your uterus, well not your uterus, but your patient's uterus is a muscle. And anything that we can do to stop this hard contraction of muscle is what we're trying to do. So tributylene is a beta adrenergic. Fancy words for your beta 1 and beta 2. If you guys haven't been through farm and you're going through OB, it's going to be kind of tough. But it's okay, I got your back. <laughs> beta 1 is in the heart. Beta 2 is in your respiratory. These help to increase your heart rate and increase your respiratory rate. So your beta 2 adrenergic agonists, like let's say a bronchodilator, aka albuterol, is going to expand your lungs. Now beta 2, if you're going to give something for a beta 2, like albuterol, bronchodilator, it's going to expand the lungs. It's nonspecific, so it's going to increase the heart rate as well. So tributylene is a beta nergic, sorry, beta adrenergic. It's going to egg on our heart and our lungs. So that's why the big cautions for these is watch out and hold your medication if the heart rate goes too high, like over 110 beats per minute. Another thing is that we give albuterol, or this beta-2 agonist, in the field, in the um, ambulance field, if we want to get um, glucose into the bloodstream. So for our pediatric people, we can actually give uh, albuterol, and it will actually help get glucose into the bloodstream. So you want to hold your increased glucose for your diabetic patients, okay? It's going to increase the glucose in the bloodstream. So if you have an indication for your diabetic patients, you're going to hold that for your moms who have, let's say, uh, gestational diabetes, or even just diabetics across the board. That's one of the things that you have to watch out for. So the, lo the loading dose is uh, 2.5 milligrams sub-Q. It's kind of like your signing bonus. We're going to get you up into that therapeutic range. And then keeping them at that therapeutic range is our 2.5 to 5 milligrams PO every four hours. Now, these drugs are going to help your mom to decrease contractions. Help the mom to uh, have the uterus relax a little bit. So just watch out, guys, for the respiratory rate either going too low or, on the other spectrum of things, the heart rate going too high. Those are the big indications there.